internet friends. Welcome to another episode of the Synergy Cafe online show featuring speaker, entertainer, close-up illusionist, and marketing alchemist, Magic Brad. It's the internet lifestyle show about career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. We're moving the online chatter over to real life activity. And now, please welcome your host of Synergy Cafe, Magic Brad. Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I'm here on uh, on the Internet again with uh, another guest for today. I've done two today, and this is my second, and his name is Jack, and I can't pronounce it. Boyajan. Boyajan? Boyajan. Boyajan. Boyajan is the uh, easy pronunciation. Boyajan. Is that, where is it? What kind of name is that? It's Armenian, actually. Armenian! Um, Yes, yes. We had a lot I of those. We'll give, you it, we'll give it away. At the end, if you see an IAN, it's 95% certain that there's some Armenian blood there. Yeah, we had some uh, Armenians out. I, I lived out in L.A. for a while. We used to promote uh, uh, martial arts, and there's a lot of guys out there doing judo and stuff. And, sure, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and uh, God, I can't remember the name of the city, but there are a lot of Armenians there. Yes. Glendale, and, Glendale. Probably. Yeah, very, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go. Cool. That's exactly what it was. So, what part of town are you? Where Where are you in the United States? I'm in New Jersey, uh, Jersey. in Bergen County, uh, oh. New Jersey, which is just outside of New York. About maybe it's a suburb of New York, probably the closest suburb for uh, you know uh, to, in New Jersey to New York. It's about a half hour to downtown. Yeah, I knew a guy from Hoboken. Yeah, uh, they're a little closer. Yeah, Hoboken okay. is same same area. <laughs> got it. I've been there. So. So you're married, you got kids, you got a big old family, you got, what do you got? I do, I do. I have four children, uh, married very happily, and um, we. Uh, the, one of my sons works with me on, uh, he's actually one of the co-founders of uh, Envest and Funflix, which we'll talk about today, uh, and the others are either just getting out of school or is still in college. So how long have you lived in New Jersey? Oh, I've been here since I'm a... I'm an immigrant uh, from uh, Beirut. I'm a Christian that we, my family ended up in Beirut because of all the migration that happened after the Turkish genocide. Got it. And we ended up coming here. My, uh, my father brought four children here, kind of didn't speak any word of English, ended up becoming his interpreter and then his manager and then his partner. And by <laughs> the time I was 18, I was running three businesses, scholarship to the Wharton School of Finance, because I happened to also be a good student. And so that ended up um, kind of putting me into a track with real estate. Came, I came out of there, uh, didn't want to do the, um, uh, the typical, uh, you know, uh, route coming out of Wharton and I became an entrepreneur, kind of like our current president and in, in real estate particularly, uh, and then started developing properties and eventually went back and got my law degree as well. So now you're in the, you're in the financial realm of things, aren't you? Yes, That's what I yes. To read blending us. kind of all of the skill sets and those uh, individuals around me to take advantage of what I think really is the the most extraordinary change in our in our market uh, in terms of capital formation, Brad. Since uh, going back, I guess to 1933. Yeah, I I read some of this stuff on you got a thing called Funflix, and then what the, what popped out when I saw it was this crowdfunding, and that's the whole. It's amazing what the internet has done. I mean, it's it pretty is. amazing that someone can just plug a little thing in there. And now they're no longer a customer; they're a merchant because they can swipe a card. And there's people that have jobs as cab drivers because they have a cab and an app. It's Absolutely. fascinating. Absolutely. So they're doing that oh, with money too. It's it, in interesting times we live in, right? That's that's <laughs> what the Chinese. Uh, tell you is the best thing you can think of or maybe the worst yeah. uh the, look the the reality is that um the ability to raise money for various projects has really changed a lot right now today you can use the internet to communicate your special projects to the world and invite people to join you in in advancing those 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 projects but you, and, you know, we, we we started with envest which is a real estate based uh funding platform uh, it's our own. We don't subscribe. It's not like one of these uh, subscription models, which a lot of people who are doing crowdfunding or trying to anyway, are subscribing to these various platforms. And they rely on these platforms to kind of uh, bring in the properties 
I bring in the, 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 the investors. But the other problem with that scenario is that they don't vet the projects. So those platforms don't necessarily have anything to do with looking at the deal and saying, hey, is this safe? Is this good? Is this something, you know, that someone should invest right. in? So that's a big difference with us. We do that. We vet every project, both in terms of real estate, which is the invest.com uh, site, and then Funflix, which is the kind of it's using the same platform, but raising money for films and other entertainment projects. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh... I know it's important to work with somebody else because I've been doing this internet marketing thing and, and the way people describe it is you just join this system and you push a button and it works. But th that's not the case with crowdfunding, especially when someone's, eh, I don't want to, I don't know if I want to invest anything in this. I don't know what it is. So it's good to talk with someone like yourself that can explain. Now, you said uh, something exactly. about movies and films. That That's something to invest in? I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> it, it, you know what? It's one of the most profitable sectors. It's just kind of elite people who you, who do invest in there. The studios have dominated that space. And really, the, the artists who have a great film to make are relying on their families and friends to kind of help them uh, raise money independently of the studios. So there's a big gap between those who are just kind of doing their small little projects for $50,000 and the studios who are really taking on deals that are, you know, they're, they're underwriting 20, $30 million projects or more. There's a big gap. And, and most of the films are only, they only should cost two to $4 million or $5 million to make a good quality film today, a Hollywood, mm -hmm. you know, quality film. And so the only way to raise that is through what's called the private sector where the, you know, where people would put together this, these private memorandums. Mm -hmm. And there's this small little group, in, in, in the country and in the world where they get these memorandums and they say, yeah, I like that. I'll, I'll invest a hundred thousand. I'll invest 200,000. And if you don't get to those people, you don't make your film. So here comes Funflix. Now we are able to introduce these films to the entire world, mm -hmm. literally. And you can invest as little as $10,000, $5,000. I think our projects are right now. And you could be part of, this group that funds a major movie uh, movie production. That's and cool. So, yeah, absolutely cool. And you know what? These guys have been making three, four times their money all this time. If you invest in films and, and it's a decent film, you're going to double your money and sometimes you're going to quadruple it. You know, on that investment thing, years ago I invested in a funny bone comedy club here in Minneapolis and didn't make much money, but I had a really good time. I, I <laughs> leveraged it for my own, like I used to do magic. So I used to invite event yeah. planners there and I leveraged that opportunity to be involved with that. So even if a person invested in a film that wouldn't quite make their money back, they could possibly just by saying I'm invested in this thing, there's a lot of pride and fun that you could have out of, out of doing uh, stuff like that. Absolutely. There's a lot of, a lot of advantages that are not monetary based, but I'll tell you though, even on the money side, you know, we, we, they get the way, the way we're structured, we're not going to be stuck with the Hollywood accounting structure where mm -hmm. a lot of the money is siphoned out of a movie yeah. before <laughs> investors get their money. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, right? I, I was out there. It's amazing how it's I mean, amazing, right? So the money it's like, a, they it's like a different reality, right? It's it is. They, they used to pay off the homeless guys to just get out of the picture. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. there's a lot, lot of money gets spent out there. So the great thing about Funflix is if you're invested in a film, you're the first to get paid after the cost of the film, which is not the studio cost. It's like the real cost, you know, because these are not studio made. I mean, they're studio based, but they're, we, we go out, our producers actually have real, in, you know, real asset, real um, expense numbers, not the inflated ones. So the likelihood of the investor getting paid back and getting paid back with a profit is much higher than if you invested in a, in a studio made film. The other thing is, Brad, we once you your the run of the film is done and, and theatrical release is done and and so is the you know uh, the uh, the pay per view uh, and the and the Netflix of the world and so forth, it goes into a library. The film will go into a library and your investment goes into a library as well. So your investment is converted into an investment in the library. And so every film that Funflix will fund will end up in this library. So if you happen to have maybe picked uh, maybe the average film instead of the, the big blockbuster, guess what? You're going to eventually benefit from that big blockbuster too because you're gonna, it's going to be part of that library. 
and you're going to be you're going to be paid out of the library proceeds as well because there's a lot of residual value in those films and in the entertainment products. So this is this is fascinating because I do a lot of these interviews and I meet people from all over the place and it's fun finding these different things. I never thought about investing in the film industry and now you've kind of made it fairly easy for a person to do it, but you got some like guidelines and things that uh, maybe certain people are, who can invest in this? That's a good point. Right now, FunFlix, just at this moment, is only for those who can establish accreditation. And what I mean by that is that you have to have the ability to show that you have at least a uh, million dollars of, of, of assets, not money, just assets. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to also, or, or you have to show that you're making a, at least $200,000 a year. Okay. Either way, you're accredited and you can participate. In a couple of months, we're going to have non-accredited investments as well through Title III and Title IV. And I'm, think, I'm talking jargon now. It's about the crowdfunding <laughs> statute that, that passed a couple of years ago. So in a couple of months, we're going to be able to put up uh, movies that are a little bit smaller in terms of budget, under a million dollars, and you can invest as little as $250. Really? Wow. I mean, Pretty that would cool. be cool if we're just, just doing it. I, I know that uh, I use Fiverr sometimes, and I had some people, uh, these eight, these Indian women, balance pots on their heads with my logo on it, and it cost me five bucks, and it's just fun to do it. So it'd be 250 bucks just to say you're invested in a movie. It would be worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, and eventually, you know, the, if you invest enough, you, you could actually get, you know, a stand-in part. You can get – you're going to be able to see – uh, production of the film and or entertainment product through a webcam. So you actually see the production. Uh, you'll be able to go online and see it and look at it. Uh, you'll be involved in the premiere. Uh, you'll be notified of premieres. So there's a lot of positive aspects to this that are not just necessarily making money. It's a lot about, you know, supporting the, the people you want to support, mm -hmm. supporting, you know, great talent that you know or want to know more about. So it's a, it's a very, it's going to become a community of, of people both supporting and producing and talent and directors and all of this as a, almost kind of a family of, uh, of, of, of these various resources that can, are going to produce uh, quality entertainment uh, and movies. Got it. And we're going to, we're going to do TV series too. I was gonna, I was gonna, that's kind of what I was just going to ask. Is yeah. out in the the movie industry, there's a lot of stuff, documentaries and comedies and Absolutely. and talk yes. shows. And so, what types of programs could a person get involved with? Uh, series, you know, a series that would be picked up, let's say, by Netflix. Um, the documentaries that are one-offs or multiple series of documentaries. You know, I can think of where you know, Viceland now is a huge. Uh, production, right? But imagine Viceland, something like Viceland coming on the market today and Funflix supporting it. So imagine the first 13 series of Viceland being kind of done by Funflix, being picked up by, let's say, one of the majors, major studio, major TV, cable, or whatever. And now it'll be self sustaining. You know, you'll get uh, fees from that 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 uh, television channel or or brand product you know or in some cases uh, product placement fees and then you're off to the races now you kind of the next 26 episodes are self-funded but you as an investor in t continue to benefit from that activity so when you say benefit and more when you say benefit, usually investors want their money back. How do they, how do they make their money? I was money? Just about to say, you benefit in the sense that you get your capital back first, and then you'll get proceeds from residuals and, and series uh, uh, fees that come in oh, from cool. the various groups that want to promote, you know, want to show your film or want to show your entertainment Got piece. It. Very you know, cool. Every episodic value, there's an episodic value to those things that have shown that they can attract audiences. And it could range from, you could have a, uh, uh, you know, you could launch a 13 uh, episode uh, series, and then the next year it gets picked up for, say, 26 episodes, right? The episodic value of that could be as much as a million dollars an episode, if it really hits. So is this kind of investment, is this like a risky investment, and in it's something you put money into it, and everything ends up on the cutting on the editing room floor, and it never gets produced? or what? <laughs> Well, look. Funflix is a different product than, let's say, real estate. Invest uh, through real estate is very much more uh, certain. 
has a lot more, um, uh, you have real property as your underlying asset. Uh, Funflix is producing product, you know, uh, and therefore it's creating assets. And so in that sense, you're going to have a lot more opportunity in Funflix to create something new and different. And you could, I mean, you know, you, you can see uh, evidence of, of many, many other products that have cost you three thousand, three million to make, and it could return sixty million, right? Uh, if you were in the studio industry, you know, you might only get a, a fraction of that sixty million. But in Funflix, the investors are going to get a vast majority of that upside, and yeah, it could be very profitable. Can it also fail? Of course, it can. You know, it's part of the investment environment. Sure, but you'll be able to know exactly how much it costs to make, what the theatrical releases are. And you know what's important, Brad? The, the you know, films are better sold when they're in the can, meaning they're shot, they're edited, post-production's done. Now you go to the festivals and you show the product. Sure. Now it's picked up by the major distribution market and they pay you well. They pay you for your production cost completely, which means the investors get their money back at that point. And then they pay you a, a, a percentage, a good percentage of their theatrical uh, revenues. So I got a couple more questions and then I want to ask you my big why question. And right before I do that, I want to find out how we can get a hold of you and, and, and uh, sure. you know converse. But uh, one question I kind of had was, do we get to kind of pick and choose? How do we find out? Do you send us a script or something and we say, okay, that well, sounds like a good one. I think I'll invest in that. Yeah, you go on Funflix and you click on the uh, the, the particular movie that's kind of synopsis. The synopsis is right there for you. And you get a chance to read the script. You have a treatment that might be on there as well. You might actually have people who've already read the script and have opinions on it. Uh, you'll have potential cast members that have either been already... Uh, you know, firmed up or our potential okay. uh, suggested script uh, cast. So it's there's a whole bunch of information. Oh, and also financial data, right? Like, what do we anticipate? High, low, medium, me, high, medium, low in terms of revenues, and then expenses are identified both above the line and below the line. So it's it's all there. Everything is online and available for 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 the viewer and the investor to see and be comfortable that they understand because in addition to that, even the producer's history, their crap, their, you know, their success, the past performances, all of that is online. Okay. One more question. Then I want to ask you how to get a hold of you. And then I got my why question, but um, there, there's a, this is sort of a new kind of thing. So do you see any, any drastic changes that might be happening with this, this uh, new industry? Only positive. I see it eventually getting uh, widespread recognition. I think a lot of people are going to get comfortable with it. I think the, uh, the regulations about limiting the size of these uh, projects are going to, uh, the cap is, still, is going to continue to go up as the SEC and the government gets a little more comfortable that people are, are getting, on, you know, they have the knowledge base to make good decisions and they're not being taken. As long as fraud and and manipulation doesn't penetrate our industry, we'll be fine. Got it. I think that's a self-governing situation. We all have to be uh, respectful of the of the investor, and we need to be very clear that we're there for them as much as we are for the project. Right. Sure. So the projects and the investors have to always have uh, a good sense of communication, and that's our responsibility. Got it. Well, this is very cool. So. Can you share how to get a hold of you? Then I want to ask my favorite big why question. So how do, how okay. do we find you? Sure. What website? Yeah, you can, you, can, uh, you can reach me at jack at invest or jack at funflix.com. I'm the only jack here, so that's good. Um, but really, go online and look at our, our prod projects and what we're offering, both invest.com, endvest.com, or funflix, F-U-N-D, flix.com that's the real estate and the film and entertainment respectively and uh, if you have any questions let us know we're here to help you and you'll you see a phone number there you can also call us okay well here's my big why question why is it that you're doing this why aren't you like a resort owner or why aren't you still in real estate or why aren't you like a, a yoga instructor yeah sure you know i'm listen i'm also <laughs> i'm still doing real estate I love real estate. It's in my blood. I used to be in the film industry. We used to uh, 
buy some uh, some properties and then repackage them. I I love these two industries. I'm still involved in real estate. I love I love film and entertainment. I, I hope to get back into it. I also love at my age, at my time, I'd love to see others become involved in both those categories and both those industries. Uh, and I think this is an amazing opportunity. It's a it's once in a lifetime, and I'm so happy that I can be part of that and help to uh, bring these projects to the masses for their investment and their and their and the point of doing it. Okay, well, I'm going to check it out. It's an interesting fund flick, so funding the flicks. I get, I get it. That's cool. You got it. You got it. Well, I appreciate you taking the time today to be on Synergy Cafe, and maybe down the road we uh, do another one. I do some stuff on the financial end of real estate and things like that. So, Jack, okay. appreciate you taking the time. Thank you, Brad. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Peace. Take care. Peace.